Russia is upgrading one of its main battle tanks, the T-62M, for combat operations against Ukraine, with new footage on social media showing an uptick in the quantity of these tanks being brought towards the front line. As picked up by Defense24, the last two to three months have been characterized by a high number of videos showing refurbished and modernized Russian T-62M tanks being transported by rail towards the front. The news outlet states that some of the footage is likely the same transport captured in different regions, but several of them are materials concerning different machines. The first of the discussed footage comes from early July and shows refurbished T-62Ms with added Contact 1 reactive armor blocks on the front of the hull and sides and rear of the turret. The vehicles have their large caliber 12.7mm DSHK machine guns and side protective skirts removed for transport. The footage was reportedly taken at the Kamensk Shaktinsky station in the Rostov Oblast. The second video appeared in late July and concerns more modernized T-62s presenting a version of both the T-62M and the T-62MV variants. This may indicate a continued lack of standardization in the work carried out on vehicles withdrawn years or even decades ago. In addition to standard ERA blocks, they also receive roofs or cages on which reactive armor elements resembling those used in T-80BVM for some time were also mounted. Unlike the previous footage, these tanks have side armor skirts attached, likely made of reinforced rubber. It's possible they also received communications jammers. The vehicles underwent basic modifications including the installation of anti-drone cage armor and the addition of sparsely placed reactive armor blocks. The news outlet considers that the 103rd tank repair plant is probably responsible for the work on most of the mentioned tanks. Spare parts deliveries probably originate from North Korea, which allow for the successive repair and modernization of T-62s. Considering that the mentioned facility received a contract in 2022 to carry out this type of work for 800 vehicles, it seems that all available key components in the Russian industry have already been mostly used up. The Korean drip, which has reportedly been ongoing for months, is thus very valuable for the Russian armed forces. So far, Moscow has lost at least 180 T-62 family tanks in the fighting against Ukraine, of which about 146 are irrecoverable losses, according to data from the Oryx service. The T-62M is an upgraded version of the standard Russian-made main battle tank T-62. It was taken in service by the Russian armed forces in 1983. The T-62M is fitted with the Shechsner laser beam-riding missile system, passive armor protection, a V55U engine and the R173 communications system. The vehicle's mobility was also improved by implementing a new V55U engine with 620 horsepower. Ukrainian military in the Kursk region closed the cauldron in which about 3,000 Russian soldiers found themselves, writes Bild. Several days ago, the Ukrainian armed forces managed to occupy the village of Krasnoktyabrskoy, as a result of which the eastern border of the cauldron, which is blocked from the west by the state border, and from the north by the Syme River, was completely closed, notes Bild military observer Julian Repke, citing satellite data. According to the publication sources familiar with the situation, the area of the cauldron could be about 700 square kilometers. We are talking about an area of 20 by 35 kilometers, which was cut off from full supplies after the Ukrainian armed forces blew up three bridges over the Syme River with strikes from Himars systems and with the help of aviation, on August 16, 18 and 19. The bulk of the encircled Russian military is in the villages of Tyatkino and Glushkovo, a thousand in each, and another thousand are along the border, a build source indicated earlier. The cauldron was closed even though the Russian military managed to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the village of Koronivo, which had been under Kiev's control since August 20, along with the railway station of the same name, Repki notes. To supply the group that was under threat of encirclement, the Russian armed forces are building pontoon bridges across the Syme, which, however, are being attacked by the Ukrainian armed forces. On August 19, 
the crossing between the villages of Zvanoy and Glushkovo was destroyed. On August 27, the Russian military built another crossing in Zvanoy, it is located approximately 2 kilometers from the destroyed bridge across the Syme, Radio Liberty notes with reference to satellite images. At least two pontoon bridges had previously been attacked by the Ukrainian armed forces. For a full-fledged defense of the Kursk region and the return of lost territories, the Russian Defense Ministry needs about 50,000 soldiers, military analyst Yen Matveyev previously estimated. But the Kremlin has no plans to redeploy forces from the front in Donbass, where the Russian army has broken through Ukrainian defenses and, according to Deep State, has managed to seize 200 square kilometers of territory since the beginning of August, for times more than a month earlier. Conscripts will be sent to the Kursk region, Bloomberg sources close to the Kremlin previously reported. According to Meduza's sources close to the Russian government, the fighting near Kursk will continue for several months, and this is an optimistic assessment. Putin is focused on ensuring the collapse of the Ukrainian state, after which, in his view, the issues of the territories under Kiev's control will automatically become irrelevant, says Tatyana Stanovea, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center. While this is undoubtedly a blow to the Kremlin's reputation, it is unlikely to cause a significant increase in social or political discontent among the population, Stanovea says. A Ukrainian attack could actually lead to an increase in anti-Ukrainian and anti-Western sentiment.